Hi guys, um, welcome back and welcome to my channel. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit um, nervous <laughs> for this. Uh, here I am. I'm Natasha and you're in Witchcraft Daily. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous because obviously it's the first time that I'm showing my face. I'm not um, used to do that. Uh, I mean, even when it comes down to private life photographs and videos and stuff like that, I'm, I'm not really too comfortable when showing myself. But I thought it was time for the proper presentation and um, for what we are going to talk about today. Uh, it made sense. So the video today is about circle knitting machine, obviously, but is around the question that I've seen uh, many asking in social media at the moment, and it is about which one should I buy. So first of all, obviously, let's talk about circle knitting machine. What are they? So. It, it it's pretty much what the word says a circular knitting machine um that will allow you to make tubes or flat panels and by making tubes and flat panels you will be able to make several different type of projects being wearables being toys being uh home decor you name it so on the market we have several brands um Depending also on the country that you're in, you might have more options uh, than others. But the main two brands that uh, everybody most commonly will talk about and own are the Adi and the Centro. Those are the ones that more easily you will find on the market and most of the crafters will have and own and use. So what are the differences? Let's talk about the central machine for a moment. So the centro is made in China and comes in different sizes, four to be exact. It's the 22, 32, 40, and 48. The most commonly used are the 22, 40, and 48, and the machine is made of plastic. It's a good quality machine, um, and, it ha and it's affordable. You can find it on Amazon, AliExpress, Timo, um, I, I believe there are other sites on the web that will sell this machine, uh, eBay, plus um, I believe especially in the US you might have more options to buy this machine or similar uh, in shops or even find them secondhand in Goodwill and things like that. I'm based in the UK. We are not so lucky. Well, it, I'm in the UK, but I'm in the Northern Ireland, so I'm, I'm even less luckier than others. Um, I had never been able to find this machine secondhand in any charity shop or anything like that. And it's not as common to find it secondhand anywhere regardless. And probably it's a good thing. So either we are be a very small group in Northern Ireland or we just love our machine so much. So what about the Adi? The Adi is made in Germany. It comes only in two sizes, the 22 and the 46. And the machine is made of plastic also, but is a superior quality. And it has a steep price compared to the central. So in the UK, obviously, I can only buy, base myself for what I can see in my country and what I paid. Um, I paid 156 and I believe it's still around that price tag. 156 pounds. The Abdi, where the Centro, I think it was like a third of that price, give or take. What are the main differences? For the Abdi, you have only two sizes, where the biggest one is the 46. For the Centro, you have four sizes machines, where the biggest is the 48. The Adi, all the machines will come with a row counter, where the central, only the 48 machine will come with a row counter. The row counter on the 48, it's known to um, become unreliable 
in, in use and long-term use and it will prone to break. Can be replaced, but still. When you purchase an ID, an ID will come with a booklet, a leaflet with instructions. Sometimes it will come with a, a booklet uh, of some patterns to use. It will have clamps to hold your uh, machine in place on your work uh, station. And I believe it has also a needle. And it will come with a set of uh, needles of the actual machine as a replacement. The center, on the other hand, will come, it doesn't have clamps. It will stay in place by suction cups. But obviously, depending on the surface that you're working on, those suction cups might not work or not work as good. Um, inside the box, usually you will find a couple of needles, uh, a crochet hook. Sometimes you will find actual circular knitting needles and um, a couple of balls of yarn very cheap quality yarn but it, it helps it just test out the machine and it's great for waste yarn um on the rd the row counter for example works both ways so if you're on the tube mode or panel mode the the row counter will count for you no matter on the central it only counts on the tube mode so if you're working on a panel not not idea. The RD, none of the machine have a yarn tensioner, so you will need to learn to give tension with your hand. Um, it's a little bit of a learning curve, not nothing uh, too difficult, but at the beginning you might have some um, some issues with the tension because maybe you're not used to it. Where on the other hand, the central will come with yarn tensioner. So it's just a wee um, guide where you will pop your yarn in and that will uh, provide the a constant tension to your work. And then obviously the main difference is the price tag. One is dear, one is not. The pros and cons that I can think of. So for the Andy, obviously it's a very sturdy machine. It has a brilliant row counter and can handle thicker yarn. The cons, it has a high price tag and the 22 needle machine has a common issue of splitting the yarn during cast on. For the Centro, the Pros, it's an affordable machine. It comes in many sizes. All have the yarn tensioner and the 48 is the biggest one on the market. Cons, not as sturdy, but all counter only on the big machine and it's prone to break. Limited on the thickness of yarn that you can use. Right. Let's talk about a second for yarns. So usually it's recommended to use yarn that are either DK, iron weight or worsted weight yarn. Um, and usually people tend to not recommend to go any thicker. So chunky yarn is um, a no-no. In saying that, again, personal experience, I know my centro will not hack any chunky yarn at all. I mean, a worsted weight is as far as it gets. The idea on the other hand, um, it can handle chunky yarn, but you need to be careful how chunky this yarn is. Meaning that you might have two bolts of yarn, two different brands, colors, two different materials, both classified as chunky, but one might be thicker than the other. The add the might struggle. It might work with a thinner version of that chunky yarn, but not so much with the with a thicker one. So you need to be obviously aware of that, careful on the yarn that you're using and work with your machine and not against your machine. So if your machine doesn't like it and it, it's struggling to crank around, don't force it. It's not worth breaking your machine for a ball of yarn. So 
which one should you buy? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not telling you. But ask yourself this. Are you completely new to the craft with yarn? Have you ever knit it before, crochet before? Have you ever, I don't know, done loom, um, work with looms? How likely are you going to develop a passion for this craft? What would you like to make with your machine? How much can you afford to spend? So let's go through these questions and see the different scenarios. So are you completely new to this craft? Let's say yes. You never worked with yarn before, ever. Then how likely are you, the, are you going to develop a passion for this craft? It's a 50-50 chance. You're either going to love it or not. So without any experience in the past, you're, you're here that you want to dip your toes and, and see if it's something that's good for you or not. Fair enough. What would you like to make at first? Do you just want to make small things like keychain size things or maybe small wee plushies for kids? Or would you want to have a bigger array of options? Most likely you might want to have more options at your disposal. So in that case, I would advise you to concentrate your thoughts towards a 46 or a 48 machine as, as the first machine to buy. But which one? Which one would you buy? It depends. How much can you afford? So in a scenario where you're wanting to just dip your toes, you're a 50-50 chance. You don't know really if you're going to like it or not. It seems fun, but you don't know. Never tried it before. Never worked with yarn before. So ask yourself, are you willing to spend and gamble on that? 150 plus pounds, dollars, whatever that is, for a machine that you're going to use, you're going to test out, but you might find yourself that maybe you don't have the time, it's not really that exciting as you thought it might have been, but then leaving that machine at the back of the closet, the back of, of, of a wardrobe, and being forgotten. Yes, you can set it back, you can... I mean, if you're lucky enough that you're within your returning time, you can return it. But if too much time has passed, you can maybe sell it secondhand, but then you're still going to lose money on it. Just ask yourself, is it worth it or not? Again, in a scenario where you almost know that you're going to like it because you already uh, had experience in working with yarn, you maybe knit it or crocheted or you, you work with the looms, whatever that is. So it's most likely that you're going to enjoy this craft. Again, can you afford it? Do you really, really want an RD because it's, it strikes you to be a more reliable machine overall? Fine. Do you want to wait to budget for it if you don't have it, if you don't have the money right now? Things like that. These are the questions that I advise you to ask yourself. I'm the kind of person that it's very impatient. If I want something, I really, really, really want something, I'll try my best to have it right now. So when I was faced with the decision of which one to buy, in a way it was a no-brainer because obviously I didn't have 150 points to spend right away, not on a machine. and. I could see that both machines would have delivered the same uh, results. At the end of the day, it, it, a hat made on a Adi and a hat made on a Sintro with the same yarn, it, it comes out with the same results. Unless there is something really wrong with the machine, but that's it, it, that is being unlucky, then both machines will do the same job 
So for me, it was a no-brainer. I went with the Zinto with the cheapest options out there that I could get out of Amazon the next day and start playing with it. So I'm not sitting here to tell you which one to buy, even though I've seen other crafter doing that. They will tell you, oh, absolutely, buy the Addy. If uh, my advice just to get a budget for the Addy or budget for the Centro. I'm telling you, do your homework. Listen to the other crafters, listen to comments, read comments, check videos, and try to make as much as an informed decision that you can. Consider what can be a deal breaker for you or not. Some people, for example, may tell you that the handle on the Adi is uncomfortable. Can be. Some other people might tell you, oh, but the row counter on the central is a nightmare. True. If it's not reliable, if it's not working correctly, or if it's actually broken, then of course. But these are all things that can be fixed in a way. So on the central, for example, all of my machines have a digital row counter that I bought out of Amazon. It's not the prettiest thing ever, but it works a dream. It's reliable, easy to look at, easy to see what row I'm in. And it, it's attached to my machine. Works fine. It's the one with the wee magnet. On the other hand, I've seen people complaining about the handle on the Addy and they bought a replacement. That is more of a, a handle shape oblong thing that they can um, grip more comfortably. Uh, what else? I, for example, craft a lot in my living room. In my living room, my workspace, my worktop is not ideal for suction cups. And once again, being my central, the central for the, the, the machine that I would work the most with. I was able to find a wee shop on Etsy that 3D printed legs that they were similar to the Addy ones. And I bought those replacements so I can use the clamps that came with the Addy with the Centro. So in time, you're going to adjust your machine to your needs. If you think, oh my God, I need to uh, hand tension my yarn with the Addy where with the Sintra, just pop it into the tensioner and it does it for me. True, but there are tensioners out there that you can attach to the Addy and it will work just as good. So the difference that I've seen between the two machines, yes, one is sturdier than the other, but the other is not, um, it's not something that is going to break on you five minutes in unless you really are destructive person that is, is, is doing something wrong with it. I don't see any of the differences between the two machines being deal breakers. So it, it's really up to you. Now, what I can tell you though, is a wee side note about the 22 needle machine. So. What's going to happen is this, you're going to buy your first machine and let's say that is the 46 or 48 needle machine. If you like the craft, most likely very soon, you're going to think about buying your 22 needle machine. Because a lot of projects will prompt you to work on both machines to complete the entire project. So when it's time to choose the 22 needle machine, my advice there, I'm not telling you which one to buy, but I'm going to just throw it there of which one not to buy. I had an extreme amount of problems with the Addy 22 machine. This problem is common. And don't, I'm, I'm not going to say that most of us have it, but a lot of us will. will. And the problem in itself is that on the 22 needle machine, when you're casting on, it splits the yarn. So what happens is that when you're 
working on the 22 and you're casting on with work yarn, working yarn directly, then that splitting the yarn obviously it ruins it. Plus, you need to then work on each single peg, each single needle to help the yarn not to be split. It. And this goes on for a couple of rounds, for the first couple of rounds. After that, it works perfectly fine. You might find workarounds on how to try and avoid this from happening. It doesn't always work. And the bone that I have to pick with this is merely based on the price tag. I cannot justify spending £100 for a 22 needle machine that has this problem that is not user based. It's not a matter of how I am casting on or the yarn that I'm using. I thought that at the beginning, but clearly it's not me. When on the other side, I have a central 22 that I paid six pounds out of AliExpress and it works a dream. Never ever have I had that problem on that central, ever. <sighs> Again, for many I, that I talk to, they know of the fact that they face that challenge themselves, but it's not a deal breaker, they love their ad, and that's absolutely fine. Absolutely. And it's not that I don't love my 22 needle machine, but when I have to do a, a job on a 22 needle machine and I'm looking at my center and I'm looking at my Addy, uh, I'm not even considering the Addy just because I cannot be bothered having to faff around on cast on with that problem. And again, with that problem does not justify the price tag. But that's me. I just thought that I was gonna throw it there and then it's food for thoughts. It's up to you. Anywho, again, do your homework. Read blogs, check out comments. Uh, at the end of the day, it's um, it, there are options out there that will work either way. I think the most important thing is for you to have fun with it. So I really wish and I really hope that once you decide which machine to buy, you're going to have fun with it and you're going to be as passionate about it as us within the community are. So this is it. Uh, thank you so much for being with me so far. Again, um, I appreciate all of you. Uh, I think this wee video with me showing my face was long overdue. Um, yeah, thank you. Now, one last thing, and I know I'm, uh, I'm a broken record for it, but if you have not done so already, if you can please subscribe to my channel. You know the drill. I mean, it really helps. It helps YouTube to understand that what we are doing, that what I'm doing is good. It's been appreciated. It's been liked. And obviously, then that will just promote more content that I will create. Plus, it helps me understand that what I'm doing is good. But in any case, if you have any feedbacks or any questions, please leave a comment below. I will um, have this mini presentation available for download if you think it's um, useful. So you're more than welcome to download it for yourself. Other than that, again, thank you so much and have a good rest of your day. Bye.